Welcome back to another episode of Trying to Figure It Out. I'm Allie, and this week we have a very special guest, one of my college friends, Sophia. For those of you who are new here on Trying to Figure It Out, we literally do exactly what the title says. We try to figure it all out. We talk about mental health, life, relationships, family dynamics, and so much more. And I'm just really excited to have another special guest here with me. We're going to talk about college. We're going to talk about TikTok. We're going to talk about acting and so many other things. I'm super grateful that you're here. So Thank welcome. you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Sophia and I met in college at USC. She's been doing amazing things ever since I met her. She's an actress. She's a content creator. She's an amazing cook. If you haven't seen her videos, you will definitely be seeing them. We're going to actually cook together tonight, which is going to be fun. She's also a model who's been featured in Vogue, which is insane <laughs> she's just so talented and i really can't wait for you guys to get to know her better and i can't wait to get into everything that we're gonna get into today okay so you grew up in costa rica which is really cool and you came all the way to la to go to college here what made you choose usc and had you spent time in la before coming to usc not at all <laughs> at all i had no idea what la was um, i had no idea what hollywood was i thought la was like new york city <laughs> um, I nope. really thought it was the exact same thing. Nope. Um, but when I, uh, so my dad's job moved us to Cleveland and so I grew up mostly in Cleveland, Ohio. Shout out Cleveland. Uh, <laughs> I just did a lot of theater, uh, musical theater. And when I was about 13, 14 in Cleveland, they were shooting, um, Fast and Furious. And there was some producer who was giving some sort of talk mm -hmm. and my mom was like you have to if you care about acting you're gonna go and you're gonna <laughs> listen to him and I was like great okay so my mom took me to hear this random man speak and she made me wait until the very end to like introduce myself um and for some reason he was like oh I would love to take a meeting with you and I was like oh <laughs> that's that's really cool I guess and so I took a meeting with him my mom obviously came to the meeting with me because I was like 13, 14 and he looked me in the eyes and he was like, your mom has to leave. And I was like, <laughs> uh, okay, that's fine. And my mom left and he was like, do you want to do this for you or do you want to do this because of your mom? And I was like, wow. Yeah. And I was that's like, that's deep, right? How old were you? Like 13, 14. Wow. So she left the room and I was like, no, like this is my dream. This is my passion. It's what I've wanted since I was really little. But when I was really little, like I didn't know what that meant at right. all. And he told me, you know, I think it'd be smart if you went to an acting program for summer mm -hmm. and did acting, you know, eight, 10 hours a day and find out if that's actually what you want. And he recommended a USC. At that point I was playing ice hockey and I went to boarding school. I could so see you playing ice no, hockey. No, that's, so So that's like a whole, sorry, another side note is like my entire life was hockey. I was obsessed with my older brother and like just doing what he did and he played yeah. hockey, so I played hockey. It was kind of my thing, like yeah. that's all I did. I was very athletic, very into sports, very tomboy. So like my goal when I was really little was um, the NHL and then I got a little bit older and I was like, wait, I'm a girl can't go to the NHL <laughs> but I can go to the Olympic team so like my goal was the Olympic team and so it was like okay like what do I do what are the steps to get there and then it was the U18 national team and so I went to the national camp I did all that and so like it was it was really intense like right. actually really 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 intense then when I got to like you know 14 15 I was like what future is there for a woman in hockey to right. be honest <laughs> um I had always had acting going on and kind of in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where that transition was. So I applied to the USC acting program, mm -hmm. applied, got in. They had us doing acting from like 9 a.m. to like 7 p.m. every day for about six weeks, I think. Wow. Um, and I fell in love with it. So once you got out to L.A., you went to USC, what has like your acting career looked like? Like what are some of the roles you've had? What are things that you've done to like advance your acting career? I had no idea about agents. I had no idea about acting. Like I had literally knew nothing at all. Like my yeah. family is not in the industry at all. Like you had to like immigrant really parents. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But I had this mentor that I mentioned earlier who helped me a, a bit. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like was like, hey, you need to learn your shit. But yeah, so got to USC, 
um, they highly, highly, highly discourage you from auditioning outside of college at all. Really? That's unique to USC. UCLA is not the same. Most schools are not the same way. But the reason USC is that way is because they're like, hey, if you are here and you're in this program, you're here to learn, you're here to educate yourself, and you're here to train yourself. Right. You don't need to be working professionally. If you want to work professionally, you don't need to be in the program. Like it's one or the other. Right. Did you like that? or No, I hated it. I just got to LA. Um, I'm starting to get some opportunities with work and you're telling me not to pursue them right I mean I still made every class I still did what I needed to do and did my homework and all that but I started doing commercials and like maybe a month in I booked a Ford commercial uh, which is cool they filmed it at Jimmy Kimmel it was just cool to have people like do my hair and do my makeup and like yeah. whatever and then from there I got a f- few commercials I did a Taco Bell commercial Summer between freshman and sophomore year, um, I had a surgery. I had a wisdom surgery that like went horribly. Like it was like worst case scenario. Um, I ended up in the ICU. I was like, my parents were like, I'm Catholic or I'm not Catholic. I grew up. Your Catholic. family. I Catholic. grew up. I my family's Catholic. You were raised I Catholic. Grew, I was raised Catholic. <laughs> Um, like my parents called a priest to give me my last rites. Like I was like in the ICU. Like I was about to die. Um, because that's Wait. how bad the surgery went. Actually, I had an internship I was so excited about at CBS. It was like a random like mailroom intern at CBS, but I was super excited about it. Lost that internship. So had that whole debacle. Yeah. Um, Stayed at home for a while. Basically, no, stayed at home the whole like summer and then came back to LA like maybe a few weeks before sophomore year started Mm -hmm. and then signed with Abrams um, Artist Agency, which no longer exists. They converted to a3 pretty big agency and i was a3 like, is huge yeah yeah so i was stoked pretty shortly after um got an audition for modern family okay and i was gonna ask you because i remember i was watching modern family i i couldn't remember the show until you just said it but i was watching and i was like i literally know this girl like i swear to god i know <laughs> and then i replayed the scene like four times i was like yeah that's definitely her what was the role what was it again i have to i remember. was no nolan gold's girlfriend that he cheated on yes Yes. i was my name is carla it was amazing but like when i booked it and i ended up shooting it i got to set we shot in malibu and i got to set and they had a whole trailer for me whoa and i and it was like six in the morning and they some someone some assistant came up to me and was like hey like what do you want for breakfast and i was like oh like what do you guys have like i'll eat anything they were like oh like we'll make you anything you want because I came That's on, uh, yeah, no, I came on in season nine. So like, they were they, they were they, doing the pr- thing. yeah they yeah. they had they had a lot of money in their budget. They were deep in it, and so they were like, literally, we'll make you whatever you want. And I'm like, what do you mean you'll make <laughs> me whatever I want? And I just remember to think I'm like sitting in this trailer, and I'm just like, this is crazy. Yeah. After that, it was radio silence. Honestly, yeah, I thought that would be the the ball rolling um it's always like that yeah the 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 thing you think will like be your moment like sometimes it's like i mean i was stoked i'm like i'm on on modern family are you kidding me (laughs) i just shot a few scenes of modern family this is the dream right my agent at the time he wasn't doing much for me at all he ended up getting fired and i got a few auditions like here and there but like no one was really like on my team yeah and i was like well shit i need to find someone else to represent me yeah yeah it was pretty difficult and i was like okay well i'll just like focus on my craft my acting and uh, just focus on college i guess the second part of sophomore year and junior year i only focused on like theater right yeah i feel like it's so interesting because like you've done so many different things and i know acting is like number one and like your like priority but it's so cool like how many other things you've done like i remember i think it was like maybe a year ago or more than that when you like had a finance job (laughs) and you like Uh, you were literally working in finance i was like this girl literally does that's two months ago that was like two months ago i quit quit, like two months ago and and then all of a sudden like now you're making these like insane cooking videos on tiktok i feel like you've really made the most of a career that can be really like stop and start obviously the industry you're in affects mental health that's just like period end of story yeah but I also want to talk to you about like your own personal mental health. We're going to start more with like the college aspect and yeah. mental health. Cool. How would you say you handled like starting at USC, a school that literally people dream to go to? It's 
on paper, on social media, looks like the literal dream. Beautiful people, people who are so happy and partying and like loving yeah. life. How would you say you handled adjusting to being a student at a school like USC? God. So I had like a lot of um, family issues growing up that I was really great at ignoring and I think I channeled all my energy into school and mm -hmm. sports and like the whole point of everything I was doing was like to get me out of there right. so got accepted to USC and that was my dream school and then once I got in and I got there it was insane um I had no it was nothing like I thought it would be not at all for us we had to rush the day we fucking got there like <laughs> I'll tell you that story. I yeah. literally get there. It's like, okay, you've been here for one day. Your family just left you in a stinky, non-air conditioned dorm. And <laughs> now you have to go yeah. find a place to yeah. pay for your friends and meet yeah. people based on your looks and your coolness. Like, yeah. oh, great. Throw me into that too. Why don't you? Yeah. Like I lived with a girl who like went Kappa and then I went Theta. And I yeah. was just like, it was like this weird thing where then I was like, I'm not cool as like cool as her like she went to the top house and like I didn't and like all of a sudden it was just like bam we're in this sorority we have a pledge class a group of girls who are just instantly our sisters and our best friends yeah, of course. meanwhile I don't know any of you like it, it just all happened so fast and I was just so shook and I Felt like I missed something because I was like, how are these girls in my sorority already so close? And I don't know who I even know or like or who I'm going to hang out with. We go to the first fucking date dash and everyone knows each other. And I'm like, yeah. wait, did I miss an event or something? Like, why don't I know you guys? It was intense. So I didn't rush freshman year, but I had the best friend group I could have ever asked for freshman year. I just had like a really diverse f group of friends and we just like loved each other and hung out and like supported each other and all this. But I remember I was sitting on a bench mm -hmm. and an elevator opened. There were all these girls that came out with like really cute dresses and whatever. They were going to and, rush. And I was, I was trying to be friendly. Like I'm not super extroverted at all. Yeah. But I was trying to be like extroverted. And I was like, oh my God, where are you guys going? <laughs> and they were like, um, we're going in a rush. Um, I was like, guess I missed it. And I just remember <laughs> thinking, I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm not rushing this year because it's, it's, it's rushed right, right now. now. And it was like the fucking third day of school. Like it was literally like the third day of school. So I didn't rush. And I had the most incredible fresh. I had such a good freshman year. But I also remember going to Teak and there was this guy that came up to me and asked me what house I was in. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm not in a house. And just like walked away from me. It's so and that happens, crazy. That happened to me so many times freshman year. Where I swear guys, it happened even if I said theta. Really? I swear to God. That's disgusting. Oh, yeah. I'm not, that's not surprising. Because so you're not weird. you're not DG or Kappa. So they, they walk away. People were just like shitting on me for yeah. not being in a sorority. But like to be honest, I didn't care that much. Because yeah. like I had really good friends. But at the same time, I still felt that kind of like... I'm missing out on the USC experience. Yeah. So like, let me rush. I had a, <laughs> honestly, a really easy experience. Yeah. I think that comes though with having been there for a year. Like yeah. you're already like, yeah, I was a sophomore. you know what I'm you're signing up for. Yeah. You've 100%. seen it. You've yeah. been to parties. Yeah. You've been to the frats. Like you get a yeah. sense of like what the vibe is. Like yeah. as a person who literally had to do it, my dad had just left. And then the next day I have to like go. No, it's absurd. That you, like, no, I can't imagine. I was a mess. I, can't imagine. I was like I can't sad yeah. and scared yeah. and anxious yeah. and homesick and just overwhelmed yeah. in every aspect. I like agree. there's, perks like I always want to sound grateful at the end of the day because like to have been a person who was able to afford being in a house to have been a person who was able to get into a house to not be judged for like my looks there's a sense of that where I always like to express like self-awareness I mean it was hard for me mentally but it was easy in the sense that like I went through rush yeah, right. I did it I got into a top house and it happened right on top of it being like very exclusive very problematic for so many other important issues the way you're being judged and having to feel like this is the only way that you're gonna have a valuable college experience to me is just like such a horrible narrative yeah. to put into a young 18 year old girl's mind and, and I remember like senior year of high crazy. school like we would all look up you know I'm schmacked yeah 
I don't even know if they exist anymore. I hope but, not. Uh, I, I also <laughs> I hope, hope I really hope not too, but I remember looking up I'm Schmacked videos thinking they were the coolest thing ever and I'd watch these part and like I didn't party in high school yeah. at all. But I would watch these I'm Schmacked videos on YouTube thinking like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing. A lot of them were at USC too. Ever. No. But so I, there was the USC video. There was the USC one. And I remember yeah. I watched that USC video over and over and over and over again. And then also once I got in, I watched that video like 50 times more. And I was like, this is where I'm going to school. Yeah. This, is, this is the dream. And so like I had this idea of USC of the, the I'm Schmacked video picture, yeah. of like, oh my God, it's all these beautiful blonde people in Literally. bikinis dancing i'm not even blonde i'm not even, <laughs> like whatever but oh, i'm like oh that's God. that's the dream right like yeah. you go and you're just like and then i got there and i'm like whoa this is not what I, it is at all i was so shocked like yeah, when i got 100 i didn't even it was that such a culture shock another thing that you talked about was like all the girls being so beautiful and all of this like usc starter pack two stacked Cartier love bracelets, a Celine bag, and like anything superficial you can imagine. In my head, I was like, I'm 100%. not cool if I don't have that. Yeah, 100%. In my mind, I'm like, I need to, I need to get a purse because at, <laughs> where I live, yeah. you don't bring a purse to dinner. You put your wallet on the fucking table <laughs> and you sit at your dinner and when it's time to pay, you grab your wallet off the table and you give them a card that's and that's it yeah like, I, agree. I didn't have I a agree. purse i, I had a little like yeah, Stella yeah, mccartney yeah. wallet and that oh, was like the nicest thing i own god yeah and okay. <laughs> that was it like i didn't yeah. have a purse like i didn't even yeah. think to need that and then yeah. i get to usc and i'm like oh fuck yeah it's sh- what yeah. the fuck yeah. is this yeah. shit i'm saying this as a person who comes from privilege and i and that was says, and that says something i was and that says something like yeah it was just crazy to me like yeah. i just have never seen anything like it and the the body image issues the (laughs) everything like i was just a poster child for comparing myself to everyone i want to talk more about like your personal experience mentally at usc how it affected your mental health and how greek life affected that and just more so like how you navigated your college experience so i had a similar experience of um the purse the purse was like such a big thing like my mom's from Costa Rica, third world country, um, big TJ Maxx girl. Um, yeah. So I did not grow up with brands at all. And I got to USC and it was not super bad freshman year because I wasn't in Greek life. Um, yeah. And then I joined Greek life. And I remember people would say, you know, like when you're rushing, you should wear certain brands and whatever. But I, I didn't own those brands, yeah. to be honest. So I was like... <laughs> can't wear them don't own them yeah um but i felt super out of place and i remember there was like a, someone's birthday party at um bakari so what is it? bakari oh and <laughs> every every girl there had these 500 dollars dresses and these yeah. three thousand dollar purses and i'm like can't do that i can't i can't like my parents don't give me any money like this is my own money yeah from babysitting when i was 14 like right. Like, where am I getting, like, where do, where do you guys get these money from? Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand. I didn't have the money to spend, and I worked in college. I worked two different jobs in college, yeah. um, and I felt really embarrassed because yeah. I felt like I just had this reputation of being, like, poor, and I didn't, I, I, I grew up, I mean, I went to private school my entire life. I've yeah. never been in public school my entire life, like, so I grew up with a lot of privileges that a lot of people don't have. And I still felt really freaking poor. I was so self-conscious all of college. I was so, I like didn't want anyone to know that I had a college job because no one, none of my friends in my circle at all had a job. Yeah, Their parents just wired the money. I was paying my own dues. And those dues were thousands of dollars. I would go to these events and I was like, I don't even have fun. I don't even like going out at these, like these events, like, I'm spending thousands of dollars for what? Like literally for what? Not a vibe. Yeah. You talked a little bit about how when you went to USC, you had like, you were trying to get away. You were trying to get away from childhood stuff and things that you've been through. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like things got worse at USC? Do you feel like you were able to at least process your own family stuff at least in a separate way and get through other demons that you were facing or do you feel like 
everything built up even more so from your college experience? Um, everything got worse. Everything got so much worse in high school, middle school, high school. Um, what was going on with my family? I had no choice but to be strong and to like, yeah, be that person. And then I got to college and you kind of had some breathing room. Um, and I thought, you know, once you get away from your family and your family issues that everything would get better, but everything got worse because that's when you finally got to process everything. Yeah. 20 years of trauma hit me really freaking hard. Yeah, it's a terrifying place. I felt yeah. really alone. Um, I never had anxiety ever. And then I had the worst anxiety where I was like trembling yeah. all the time and I like couldn't breathe. And I was like, wow, it feels like there's an elephant sitting on my chest. I feel I'm, like you're dying. Yeah. No, literally, <laughs> you feel like you're dying and you're like, what the? It's almost hard to believe it's yeah. anxiety. Yeah. You literally feel like you're having a heart attack and yeah. you're like, what am I supposed to do? And and you're like, you just, but you still have to go to class. You still have to do your assignments. Like you still have to go to musical theater practice. Like you still have rehearsal. Yeah. And, and that's what happened is like everything hit me really, really, really hard. And I, I felt like I was dying. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was. And then there's the whole um, body component to things, the whole eating disorder component. Never had eating issues. Always been like very active my entire life. Like yeah. always been very into sports. And then I moved to LA and then I went to USC and then I met all these girls, um, especially in Greek life. It was kind of this culture of eating disorders that was really insane to me. Yeah. And I got into modeling a bit. And then, you know, I'm not, I'm 5'4". I never really cared until I moved to LA. And I'm like, shit, like, I would book so many jobs. If I was 5'9", I would book so many jobs. But I'm 5'4", yeah. and so I'm not, I'm not getting considered for these, like, parts. So I thought, like, let me compensate for my height with weight. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, like, I need to lose weight. And I went home after freshman year my mom made a comment, you gained a bit of weight, you know, yeah. freshman year. And I was like, oh, crap. Well, and so I got really into health and fitness that evolved quite quickly into like obsession. And then I became full, full blown anorexia. And it, it just got to a point where I was like scared to eat anything. Like yeah. I, I was not eating. It was so, 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 so toxic. Yeah. But that's kind of like the. Like, my friends were also doing the same thing. There was no one around you to, like, say, hey, I'm concerned. Yeah. Because they were all, no, if anything, No, but I had it. professors say things to me. Like, I had, really? like, like adults, adult men say things to me being like, hey, are you okay? You don't look okay. Right. In terms of depression, um, I've struggled with that as well. Um, not as much as anxiety. Anxiety is, like, my, my main thing. Yeah. Um, depression, I, like move in and out of um it got really bad junior year um of college that's when I got cheated on and I felt like if I was prettier if I was skinnier if I was this yeah. that whatever like if I was better yeah if I was better this wouldn't have happened yeah and that was the second time I got cheated on and so I just felt like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah and only makes it worse yeah and so that kind of spiraled my anorexia um and it got really really bad and then I went into senior year of college and I was I was graduating early um honestly it worked out great thank god because uh I went into treatment mm -hmm. um for an eating disorder that was kind of my introduction to realizing like how messed up a lot of my habits were right. that I didn't even think were like wrong because so many other girls at USC, so many other friends. It's not, it's more uncommon to not have it. Right. But forever. like, that's the thing is like most of my friends would have all these habits where I like would repeat their habits yeah. and I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but totally. like they're really unhealthy. How are you now? Mm -hmm. How do you feel now? How do you feel post-college that you're away from that? Right. Like that force to be, in that place yeah. to be around those people well thank god i am in a much better place with eating disorder stuff yeah. um it took me a really 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 long time with an eating disorder 
at least for me, I think about it every single day. Every time I eat, I think about it, but it's not it's not so bad that I won't eat because of it, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know sense. what I mean? So like, it's like, there was a point like sophomore, half of sophomore year, junior year and senior year, I wouldn't eat bread. I wouldn't eat carbs. Like, that's insane. I love bread so much. Yeah, I, like I love like bread. I was, all I do is eat fucking pasta. <laughs> so like, literally, it's 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 it was terrible. It was terrible. Like I was yeah. scared of I was scared of white potatoes. Like I was scared of quinoa. Like it's like stupid. Like things that are objectively healthy for you. Yeah, I was terrified of, and I'm no longer that way. Like I'm not restrictive. It's just at the point where I am a. I think about it. Yeah, but it's still a part of it. It's a part of me, but I don't let it control me. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty grateful that on social media I haven't been called mean names regarding my weight. Yeah, because I've been scared of that. Of people, I think I've gotten one comment of someone calling me fat on the internet, but that's one comment, so it's fine. So I'm grateful for that because I know that's like an issue for a lot of people. Have you gotten the opposite? Like what is like as a person who is in recovery and has struggled with an eating disorder what does it do to you when someone comments that you're really skinny or comments something about your body in Um, a positive way to them but in a problematic way um any comment that is positive means nothing to me to be honest literally nothing like like in one ear and out the other like 100 percent. like i i was telling my mom the other day i'm like Sometimes I just like I'm going through these comments and they can all be the most amazing positive like oh my god you're so beautiful you're so whatever I'm like it means nothing to me yeah literally nothing like I would rather not have any comments yeah well thank you for sharing that mm-hmm. I really appreciate it and I know that my listeners will too I guess we'll use this as a way to transition into what you're doing now and mm-hmm. TikTok I know you as an actress. I also know you as like a foodie and a person who loves to cook and do those kinds of things. So I think it's really interesting that like your TikTok platform is very much food, like food based, you Mm -hmm. cooking, you like doing your thing. But like I also know you and I'm like her thing is also acting. So it's like what made that be your lane on TikTok and where like where do you want it to go and where do you see it going? Mm -hmm. There were two people from USC who blew up on TikTok both guys was just I was just like watching them do their thing and I was just like sitting by watching yeah. them do it and eventually got to a point where I'm like I follow all these food content creators they're like barely any women like uh-huh. at all there are no women and I was like I cook all the time so like why don't I just start like let me just try let me just yeah. like post something and see what happens and so I posted a few maybe like two or three and you know they got like couple couple hundred views like nothing, yeah. nothing crazy and then my mom and little brother were visiting and my little brother was like whoa dude like your video got 10,000 views and I'm like 10,000 views that's <laughs> crazy and I was super excited and I was like that's so cool and so I I was like you know what like let me start putting like a little bit more effort into this and whatever yeah. and so I I just did that but I posted a video and it got like 50,000. I'm like, oh my God, 50,000. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, here and so we I, go. Yeah, exactly. So I just like, kind of kept going with it. Um, and then oh, I was like, I, I just like really love doing this. Like, it's really fun. Yeah. And like, I had a really, I have a Sony camera. And so I started just shooting on it. And then a video got like a million, a million views. That's insane. And <laughs> my, yeah, like I had like 50 followers on TikTok at the time. And then I had like 10,000 and then 30,000 and 40. And it just kind of like grew from there. And I was like, Mm -hmm. wait, this is really cool. I really love doing this. So I just kept shooting videos when I wasn't working at my like nine to five investment job. Um, And it kind of just kept growing and started having brands reach out for deals. Yeah. Started making a little bit, little bit of money, little bit of money. Yeah. It just kind of grew from there yeah. and then i mean it I, literally comes up every day for me well good <laughs> like all the good time. i'm glad the I algorithm's the, working the algorithm is working. good i see it all the time good but yeah it just got to a point where like i could sustain paying my rent yeah um and doing all that and i have so much more time for acting 
the goal yeah. the goal is always acting like of course i think tiktok is an amazing platform i am so grateful because it's helped yeah. me so much for sure like within like a week of one of my videos going viral i had a meeting with a nickelodeon executives for a tv show i had so many opportunities i would not have had yeah otherwise it's just really cool because I feel like now you're posting other content. Once you get that like group of people, you can continue to expand on it and you can make it whatever you want it to be. Like the yeah. world is literally your oyster once you have that. So my issue though right now is that um, my ratio of male to female is terrifying. That's scary. Like it's really bad. Yeah. Um. And so that's kind of why I'm like, oh, like, let me try posting, like, makeup con I'm really bad at makeup. But, like, I'm like, oh, like, maybe if I post like, makeup bring over content, the girlies. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm trying. I, I don't know how I come off. But, like, yeah, um, I don't have that many female followers on TikTok. And it, like, is really crazy to me. It's not your personality It's not. All. But, like, people don't, like, know me. And so I'm trying to make content that hopefully, like, people are, like, like, I'm such a tomboy. Like, I grew up, like, yeah. I play ice hockey my entire life. Like, I've had, like, DMs from people being like, oh, like, hey, my um, husband follows you. And I asked him not to, but could you please unfollow him? Because I feel really uncomfortable if you follow. Like, what? Like, I get, yeah, exactly. And, or I get people saying, like, I look like um, porn stars or, like, like, shit like that. And I'm like, that's not that's not me like i think people think i come off in a certain way that is so interesting to that me is because it's so not the vibe i get well i'm glad to hear that but like it's really bad i barely go through my dm requests because usually they're just like creepy yeah but they're so uh, creepy but i whatever for some reason i went through them and someone dm'd me a twitter link it said like hey your video blew up in the crypto world on twitter like check it out look at the replies then I opened the link and someone reposted my video and it has like 300,000 views. And there are hundreds of comments calling me a whore. What? Yeah. And I've never, like, I'm like, I've never, I've, I've, I've never been called a whore. Like, I don't, I, I don't sleep around. It Based was on your content. That's just so not but it the was, energy. It was just crazy because I was like, it was like two days ago where I'm like sitting in my bed and what I'm just like fuck? scrolling through Twitter. I don't even go on Twitter. And I'm like, there are hundreds of men calling me a whore. And one of the first things that comes up when you look me up on Twitter now, I think it's the first thing that comes up is being called a whore the fuck isn't that fucked that's horrible yeah i'm telling you i see your videos in my feed every single time you post it. i'm <laughs> telling you no but literally there is no like anything to me that's giving like sexual the, the, the thing is, is like i'm literally like my mom follows me i'm not embarrassed to show my mom so like if you want to fucking call me a whore fine i've never been called a whore in my life yeah and seeing hundreds of people call me a whore is scary no that's scary i have one more question mm -hmm. about tiktok you opened up about having an eating disorder you opened up about so many different mental health struggles now you're in a world where you're blowing up on tiktok with something that is important to you and you love but it also is somewhat aligned with some one of your biggest struggles, one of the hardest things you've been through yeah. in your life. Yeah. And then on top of that, you're receiving, unfortunately, and so not deserved internet hate. How is that affecting your mental health? In terms of the food aspect, it doesn't really impact me that much. Like, I'm really fortunate that I'm in a good place with my eating disorder. I'm so it's, glad it's, to hear Yeah, that. it's hard, but... Um, yeah, it's taken, it's taken years. My therapist is like, you're going to deal with this every single day maybe the rest of your life you don't just like wake up and think oh like everything's fine but like yeah. not letting it impact you is for sure the difference so yeah well thank you for sharing everything of course this has been such a fun interview we i could, know I feel like we could just go on for hours honestly before we wrap up in every podcast episode i love music so we always bring music into it at the end and try to end on a more lighthearted note it's called alpes three it's basically 
we pick three songs every episode that we add to a playlist. I think for this one, it could be kind of fun to do what were like the three biggest songs we were jamming to when we were at USC. Oh, wow. Like our three, like when you look That's back. That's a great. When you look back at USC, what were three okay. songs? I hate to say Mr. Brightside. Obviously. Obviously. It has. It has. Obvious. That's, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Mr. Mr. Brightside. This song. Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay, it's, it's called This Girl. And that song, like, will always remind yes. me of any college party. Yes, like, okay. that was such a big one. We need. Know. There's like, there has to be like one like that rap like, song. It's goosebumps. Yeah, Travis Scott. I get those goosebumps. That was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah, like, yeah. you're at Lambda. Like you're at Lambda. Black the Beatles. Atrium. Or Black Beatles. Those are both. Those are both. We can add. We can. Wow! What a what a great one! Wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a big one. That was for a us. huge one. That was a huge one. Okay, we are gonna wrap up this part of our episode. We're gonna get into the kitchen and get cooking. I'm excited for you to teach me. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing <laughs> in the kitchen. Yeah, I'm excited to cook with you. I want to say thank you again. I'm just so grateful, and I can't wait for everyone to just learn from you and get to know you and follow along on your journey. And yeah. So thank you. Thank for you so much for having trying me. To figure it You're out. the best. Thanks. Fight on. Fight the fuck on. Fight the fuck on. <laughs>